Hello and welcome to Story Scoop. My name's Carly Taylor and I'm a children's author. I can't wait to give you a sneak peek at my very first picture book, The Big Beach Barbecue. Would you like to have a look at the first page? Okay, let's have a look. G'day mates, let's grab some plates. It's time to start the party. Grab your tongs, put on your thongs. Let's have a beachside barbie. Living on the central coast of New South Wales, I'm surrounded by beautiful beaches like this one. So it's not surprising that the beach crept into my subconscious and the idea for the big beach barbecue popped into my head in the middle of the night. The first two lines seemed to come from nowhere. They were so much fun, I just couldn't stop playing with them. When I first wrote the big beach barbecue, I didn't know who the characters were going to be. And I thought, barbecue at the beach is such an Australian thing to do. Why not use some Australian animals? And then I thought, how will I give them each their own personality? So I thought about the different family members and friends I've had barbecues with over the years. And I used some of them to add a little bit of personality to each of the characters. Would you like to meet some of the characters? Okay, here they are. First up, we've got Possum. She's always helping everybody out. This is Croc. He's a bit of a practical joker. He likes playing tricks on the other animals. This is Dingo. He's an awesome cricketer and he loves Pavlova. Here's Emu. She can surf and dance, but she's not the best cook. This is Roo, our chief fly squasher. Last but not least, my favourite character, Wombat. He's always stuffing his face with food and farting at inappropriate times. This is Vaughan Duck, the illustrator. Vaughan's illustrations are amazing. They're full of action and emotion, and they add an extra level of humour to the story. If you look closely, you might even see a story hidden within the pictures. The Big Beach Barbecue is suitable for the whole family. It's great for three to eight year olds. The unusual rhyme scheme is perfect for developing phonemic awareness, an important skill for kids that are learning to read and write. Let's have a look at some of the pages and see if you can figure out the rhyming pattern. Listen carefully, you should be able to hear six pairs of rhyming words. It's Possum's job to tell the mob Wombat brings the esky. Roo's got dips and stacks of chips. The stinking flies are pesky. Emi cooks while Dingo looks. His tail quickly wags. There's squeezy sauce and buns, of course. But someone burnt the snags. Let's have a look and see if you manage to hear all of the rhyming words. There's job and mob. Dips and chips. Esky and pesky. There's cooks and looks, coarse and sauce, and wags and snags. Did you manage to hear all of the rhyming words? Can you figure out the rhyming pattern? When I first left school, I got a job in a pathology lab, which involved testing food samples. Didn't take me very long before I figured out that wasn't a job I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I went back to uni and finished my teaching degree and became a teacher. It was so much fun, but very exhausting. After that, I was offered a job at Scholastic Australia as the non-book coordinator. In that job, I got to test toys. It was amazing. And then I was offered the job of book club editor, where I got to read books from all over the world. It was such a great start to becoming a writer. If you'd like some activities to do with the book, visit my website. There you'll find the teacher's notes with black line masters, craft ideas, cooking, and lots more. Thank you so much for watching Story Scoop today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to get a copy of my book, why not visit your local bookstore 
or your local library. If they don't have it, they can always order it in. Or you can find the link on my website. Sue Lawson and I write books for young people and for young adults and I'm very lucky to write with Aunty Faye Muir. Hello everyone, my name is Aunty Faye and um, I write children's books and I'm also a, um, a Bunwarang elder and Wamba Wamba elder. And Aunty Faye, you and I are lucky enough to both live on Wadawurrung land. Yes we are, it's a beautiful country that we're living on in Wadawurrung land just to walk on on the land is really uh, healthy and, and and vital for our health at the moment and similar land to your bunawarong land which is would you like to explain where that is well if i go go across the bay from queen's cliff over to sorrento over on sorrento over that side of the bay is my traditional country my grandmother's country so my country and Wadawurrung country um, are neighbours. And that would make you a saltwater person, which means you know, comes from near the ocean. What about Wemba Wemba? Is that saltwater or is that inland? That's um, freshwater. So I'm a freshwater, saltwater person. Wemba Wemba is my dad's family. Honey Faye, we have a series of picture books and Respect is our first book. Would you like to explain why we chose Respect as our first book in the Our Place series? It's an important, an important um, concept for um, children to understand, the, to respect their elders, their parents and, and their teachers because, you know, when they're at school they've got to respect their um, teachers but also respecting themselves and their friends is also very, very important. I think too with respect for me like our words it was such a joy to write them and sit there and work together and have lunch and chat as well but I think the fact that Lisa Kennedy did the illustrations because you've known Lisa for quite some time haven't you? I have I have and Lisa's um, artwork is so um, there's so much information in the artwork that tells more to, the, to our story of respect of uh, for all children I think because the children can see um, the story more of the story within that that artwork is there a particular piece of art perhaps not your favorite but the one that has the most important message for you in respect I think it's the one where everybody's sitting around the campfire with the elders and the children talking and singing and sharing and you want to confess anything about anybody around the campfire I will um, I am illustrated there as the person with the possum skin rug over her knees and my friend Laura is the one with a little boy that's got his arms around her and she's got a funny hat with pom-poms on the end and that was um, done down at uh, Phillip Island it's beautiful. And Lisa too uses the flame robin a lot too. And a lot of people will look and go, gosh, that's a gorgeous bird. But she uses it to signify something completely beyond it being a beautiful bird, doesn't she? She does. It's the messenger bird taking messages from one to the other and also taking that knowledge from one person to another and sharing. I think for me, the page where the ancestor and the bird is flying across to the current girl. That's the one that I absolutely love. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. And if I, what are you hoping that kids who read our book, um, what do you hope that they will want to learn more about or want to go and do after reading Respect? Well, I hope that they want to learn more about um, Aboriginal history, Aboriginal people and their stories because it's really important for for children to understand that Aboriginal people are the first people of Australia, so they need to know the history because Aboriginal history is their history as well. And 
the oldest continual um, civilization in the world, older than the pyramids. It's, you know, 80,000 80, years old. Mm -hmm. Finding, you know, different um, artefacts and tracing it back, the archaeologists, to say that, you know, my ancestors were here so many, many years ago. How lucky are we to be in a place that has such a long, continuous history? It just blows my mind. I love it. Yeah, it, look, it's fantastic, but it's got to get out there into schools and um, for children to learn more about it. So, only for, for young people to learn more, what would be your advice to them? With the storybooks that we have got, that's one, one step for them. Um, for visiting places where Aboriginal uh, artefacts are, are shared, like museums, um, also uh, cooperatives, Aboriginal cooperatives in their area and going and talking to Aboriginal people because, um, you know, Aboriginal people are, are very much um, would love to speak with children and tell them their story. Fabulous, because my theory is that my generation and everyone before hasn't been able to make a big enough change and it's up to our kids to do it. It certainly is. It and starts with ones. Yep, yeah, and it starts with respect. It does. It does. Honey, Faith, thank you. It's been lovely to have you chat to us for Story Scoop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. Three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to Story Scoop. Hey, Hi, and welcome to Story Scoop. I'm Renee Chemmel, children's book author and illustrator. You might know some of my books from having lots of cute and cuddly Australian animals like wombats, echidnas, kangaroos, and dead birds. Dead birds are not cute, cuddly, or adorable. Take two. Well, these dead birds are cute and cuddly, and technically, they're not even really dead because one of them is a walking, talking skeleton. He's still dead. Well, these birds are kind of cute. Let me, let me explain. You just do your job filming, okay? Now, these characters are from my newest graphic novel that's coming out with Alan and Unwin this September called Sherlock Bones and the Sea Creature Feature, and it's the second in a series of my graphic novels. Sherlock Bones is not your average detective. In fact, it's safe to say he's not even a real detective at all. He's a Tony Frogmouth skeleton that's on display at the Natural History Museum. If you're wondering what a Tony Frogmouth is, they're a bird that's nocturnal and they're native to Australia. When I say nocturnal, I mean that they're active at night. So while we're sleeping, they're out hunting and doing all of their fun things that they might do at night. I thought the first time I saw them, they were pretty cool. They have those whiskers around their beak. They sit still like a tree branch. But then, then I saw their skeletons and their skeletons are so cool. Just look at those big eyes and those expressions and those body poses. I saw these for the first time at the Queensland Museum in Brisbane and I fell in love with them. So I came home and I started sketching them because that's what I like to do is draw things that I love. I started drawing a skeleton. I tried to draw him very serious like a real artist would draw a serious skeleton. But he kept coming out looking silly and he always looked silly. And then I started drawing him more and more doing sillier and sillier and sillier things. And eventually I realized that I had created a character that was doing silly things in the museum at night. Now I thought this character might be a little bit lonely, so I gave him a stuffed bird as a best friend. And together they wander around the museum at night causing mischief. And what I did was I wrote the first version of the book with this character that I named Bones, but what I wrote was a wordless picture book for little children who couldn't read. Now, this is a bit of a mistake, as you can probably imagine. Hmm, baby book with a dead bird skeleton and lots of black pages. Probably not a great idea. And as far as stories go, all I did was walk around and get into trouble in the museum and that was the end. There wasn't much of a story. But I still loved this skeleton character. So what I did was I put it away in a drawer and I decided to just think about it while I worked on other projects. So one night while I was sleeping, the idea popped into my head. Sherlock Bones, just like 
Sherlock Holmes, who's written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but with bones. I realized this character was a mystery solving detective in the museum. And that was what I needed to create this entire story. I also changed his best friend from just being a stuffed nameless bird to Watts, just like Dr. Watson from the real Sherlock Holmes books. I also wanted to add a character who had just a little bit of sass to the story. So I created Grace, who's a stowaway raccoon from another exhibit and shouldn't even be in the museum. She's a bit of a thief because all raccoons like to steal shiny things, even in real life. And she makes, she's a bit of a suspect and a friend, which makes her a bit of fun. Well, now that we know a little bit about how these characters came to be, let's talk about the book. Sherlock Bones and the Sea Creature Feature is a mystery, and it's set in a natural history museum at night, after hours, when no one except for the security guard is meant to be wandering the museum. We think of a natural history museum, you can think of exhibits like dinosaurs and big taxidermic animals and precious stones and, and gems, all kinds of great fun backgrounds in a natural history museum. Now I happen to have a map here because part of our mystery involves the newest exhibit right up here at the top. And that's our reef to shore exhibit. Here we have coral reef aquariums, shark tanks, a mangrove forest, and a sea monster. Yes, I did say sea monster, and that's absolutely not supposed to be in the new exhibit. And that's part of this mystery that Sherlock Bones is trying to solve. What's he gonna do when he finds the sea monster? I don't really know, but we'll just leave that up to him for now. So if you like reading mysteries or funny stories or stories with lots of pictures, I know I do. This might book might be a good match for you. Just remember when you're reading any graphic novel that you need to make sure that you take time to read the pictures. Otherwise you'll miss what's going on in the story. And if you read really carefully in this book, you just might be able to solve the mystery before Sherlock Bones. Well, thank you for coming to Story Scoop. That's a wrap. Let's get reading. Well, thanks for joining us for Story Scoop today.